Right. Richie Jacobs asks, can you talk about the meaning of repent? Everyone seems to think repent means repent of your sins. And that does seem to be true. Uh, in my experience, it seems like when people um, say repent, they say it with the assumption that means repent of your sins. And repent by itself does not at all mean repent of your sins. Okay, and we're going to find that out here in a second. But first of all, let's look at the definition. 1844, Webster. It listed as to feel pain, sorrow, regret for something done or spoken. To repent that we have lost much time in idleness or in sensual pleasure. To repent that we have injured or wounded the feelings of a friend person repents only of what he himself has done or said to express sorrow for something past to change the mind in consequence of the inconvenience or injury done by past conduct all right and so on and so forth so you get the idea right to remember with sorrow as to repent rash words to repent an injury done to a neighbor to repent follies and vices so forth Okay, so sorrow, pain, regret, um, change the mind, all those things are applied to the word repent. Now let's go to, uh, let's do a word search here, right? Uh, word repent, um, there's 105 verses that contain a form of the word repent. Okay, and, and first of all, the first mention is, Genesis 6.6, 6, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Okay, so if this were to mean repent of your sins, and it repented the Lord of his sins that he had made man on the earth, it suggests that it was a sin for man to make man on the earth. That's, that's not what that means at all. All right, so it just means he had sorrow, regret, um, and a change of mind, right? And so in verse 7, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. All right, so it wasn't the fact that just that he had made man. It was the way he made man, okay, to live hundreds and hundreds of years and to be given freedom to do whatever they want for all this time. And they were given every opportunity to do it on their own without his help, and they blew it big time. They muffed it up seven ways to Sunday. They screwed it all up, and the world became a disaster. So it repented the Lord, that he had made man, so he was going to um, redo the way he had made man, right? So it wasn't a sin that he had made man, it's just the way he had made man, right? So let's go to Exodus 13, verse 17. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near, God said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. So, this God had a, an easy path that he could have took uh, his people to. And he didn't want to do that because they might see war and repent and turn back to Egypt. Right? Nothing to do with all sin. This is about turning back, changing their course, right? Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, let's see, maybe we ought to look at this one too. Uh, the 12 and 14. Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy wrath, from thy fr uh, fierce wrath. And repent of this evil against thy people. Verse 14. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people again. This is 
in context, talking about turning from or changing his course or changing his mind. Um, nothing at all to do with uh, sin in this in this particular context. Okay, and the, oh, I got to do this one right here. Uh, Numbers twenty three, verse nineteen. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? All right, first of all, um, I'm, I shouldn't say this. I shouldn't even get off topic. But you hear people use this verse to <laughs> claim that, well, this shows that Jesus is not God. Completely ignoring the rest of that. Okay, and, and the, the, these people are... Um, purposely being dumber than dog do. I think there's a more elegant, elo, uh, elegant way of saying. I think the Bible uses better words than that. Willingly ignorant. I think Second Peter something three five. There it is. For this they are willingly dumber than dog do. All right, and so that's. Just, that's the case here. That's the only thing I want to make. The only point I really want to make that um, this, again, is not in context of, um, you know, sin, right? Um, this is not meaning God is not a man that he should repent of his sins. That would be applicable, but it's not in the context. Uh, and so let's go, first of all, let's go right there, repent of sin. All right, so let's take a look here at some other examples. Okay, right here. Go ye and learn what this means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. All right, John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance. For the remission of sins. And uh, right there, that's another verse. Okay. Baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. Okay. And so on and so forth. So, uh, first of all, um, this, uh, let's see, let's use this as an example right here. The baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. So this is not a double meaning. Uh, this repentance for the remission of sins, okay, the baptism of repentance is for the turning away from your old life and turning to God, okay? If you repent of your sins over and over and over and over, repent of your sins daily, every day, every minute, every hour, you know, just constantly, repent of your sins, then all you're doing is spinning in circles. Hey, if you turn from your sins, you're not saved. That doesn't save you from turning your, from your sins. If you never sinned your entire life, you're still not saved. So, yes, you shouldn't sin. We should never sin, whether you're saved or unsaved. It's never okay to sin. But, like... For example, the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. The remission means the lessening of. All right, so you're not sinning as much once you are saved, and then you can continue on that path away from sin. All right, um, so it would be impossible for you to be saved and to never sin again, unless you were to die right away, of course. But... Um, so the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins is just simply turning to God so that your sins will be covered, right? And, uh, I mean, that's, uh, is there another example I could give here? All right, there's a good verse. So, likewise, or I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repents more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance.
repentance. Okay, so again, if this doesn't just simply mean, you know, um, you you repented of, of a sin, this means turning from your old life and turning to God and believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, just simply, you know, like some people think that, uh, well, if I just quit smoking dope and drinking booze, that uh, I will, you know, have repented and I'll be saved. That's not the case at all. You must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no way around it, okay? So I, I would say that would be a good thing to stop smoking dope. And stop drinking booze and getting drunk and liquored up. I would say that would be a very good thing, but that's not going to save you. Okay. And uh, likewise, I say to you, there's joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents. This is not talking about, oh, I quit smoking dope. This is talking about turning away from your old life and turning to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Because you are, even if you quit your smoking dope and uh, drinking booze and getting liquored up and all that sort of thing, even if you did that, you're still a sinner. Okay, but once you turn from your old life to Jesus Christ, then your sins are covered and you're no longer a sinner. Right? And uh, let's see, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. The times of refreshing is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are lifted up and we are changed in the twinkling of an eye, um, going from our uh, corruptible flesh and changed to our incorruptible bodies right okay so anyways i think those are examples that that should pretty much be easy to understand i would think um i understand man you got all these people you hear it constantly constantly saying repeating the same word over and over and over again and it gets pounded in your head repent 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 and uh, repent of your sins repent of your sins repent of your sins and the context and the meaning gets lost in all of that, in my opinion. And so, therefore, um, I think a lot of people do get confused when they hear the word repent. And it just simply means to change course or change your mind, uh, sorrow, regret, that sort of thing. All right? And it doesn't always, in context, doesn't always mean to turn from your sins. It can mean other things as well. But, no, I just want to be clear. You should never sin. It's never okay to sin. And if you've got the Lord Jesus Christ in you, you've got everything you need to uh, be led away from your sinful desires. Right? Because we're in a battle with our own war. And so we need help. We need a Savior. And we got one. We got one who can lead us the way, who can show us, who can deliver us. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Um, all right, so I think that's enough. I hope that satisfies your question. I appreciate it. Thank you.